Because with drawdown load structures, of course, although these atoms are sharing electrons, they're not, all, not always doing it evenly or fairly. Sometimes one of the atoms might have the upper hand or a greater share of electrons than it should have. And of course, we know from experience with the periodic table how to find out how many electrons an atom should be in control of. So, we said from our talks about electron configurations in the periodic table, we said that the very shape of the table explains to us where the electrons are for each atom, which particular shell, and how many electrons in each kind of subshell. Electrons going into the left hand block, when electrons going into an S subshell, electrons on the right into a P, and electrons in the middle or elements in the middle were electrons into a D subshell. So the configuration matched the shape of the table normally. So when we look at an element and we're looking for its valence electron count, just the electrons in its outer shell, all we have to do is find that element in the table, find the row it's in, and count the boxes to get to that position. One, two, three, four electrons for a carbon atom to be electrically neutral. But that's four electrons under its control. That doesn't make it stable because it needs another one, two, three, four electrons to complete its shell and look like neon. So this is probably the trickiest thing for the chapter, being clear between how many electrons an atom controls to be electrically neutral and how many it sees through the electrons it's sharing with other elements to complete its shell, which normally means completing its octet. All the elements in group uh, row two of the table and row three are all looking for eight electrons like either neon or argon to complete their shell. But some of those electrons are shared. So how many belong to it and how many belong to the other atoms that it's sharing electrons with? So for any structure, we can see for electrical neutrality, how many it should own. Oxygen should own one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. And then it's borrowing one, two electrons from another atom to complete this octet. Phosphorus should control one, two, three, four, five electrons and then get a share of another one, two, three electrons to complete this octet. So, to work out any formal charge for an atom within a Lewis structure, we're going to compare what the Lewis, sorry, what the periodic table position tells us about the number of electrons it should own, and also look at the Lewis structure and see how many it does own from its octet. And let's look at those examples. The comparison between the periodic table position of the element comparing it to the Lewis structure. And that will give us an answer for the electrical charge of that element, if it has any electrical charge. So let's look at these elements. Carbon. How many electrons is a carbon atom supposed to control? What does the periodic table tell us? It tells us four. Yeah, everybody see that? <coughs> But look at the picture. Look at these electrons, these one, two, four, six, eight electrons around that carbon in its outer shell. How many of those electrons belong to the carbon? How many belong to the oxygen? Count them. So any lone pairs around the element, these are electrons which belong to it. They're not involved in the chemical bond. Only the electrons in mutual space between the two atoms are bonding electrons. We always show those with a line, each line representing two electrons. So of the eight electrons the carbon can see, one, two specifically belong to it because they're not being used in a chemical bond, and then it has a share of another two, four, six. So if you're sharing something, if we are sharing a cake, Tanner and I, it doesn't feel like we're sharing if he doesn't get any of the cake. So these are truly shared. So for each bond, 
One electron belongs to the carbon, one belongs to the oxygen. So one, two, three, together with the lone pair, five of the eight electrons belong to the carbon. Now how many did we say the carbon was supposed to control? Four. Four. So it controls five when it was supposed to be controlling four. The electrical charge of the carbon is minus one. And we can show that in the Lewis structure with an electrical charge written in the top <coughs> right hand corner of the chemical symbol. How about oxygen? How many electrons is an oxygen atom supposed to control? Six. Supposed to control six. That's the number of boxes we count as we look along the periodic table row. Look at the structure. How many does it control? Five. Five. It's supposed to be six, but it only controls five. So for oxygen, six compared to five. Plus one for the oxygen atom. Take a couple of minutes and try and work out the formal charge for these remaining elements, these remaining two molecules. Comparing the periodic table to the Lewis structure, comparing it to the share. What is its fair share as we've drawn these Lewis structures? <clears throat> so everybody got an answer for this one, at least in the chat, yeah? So, again, how many electrons was an oxygen supposed to control? Six. As we look at this particular oxygen atom, how many <coughs> does it control? Seven. 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 One more than it should. So its formal charge is... Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Remember, if it's got more electrons than it should, it's got more negatively charged electrons. So six minus seven, it's minus one. It was the same environment, one single bond and three lone pairs, this oxygen atom is minus one as well. This oxygen is? Neutral. Neutral. Should <coughs> control six, and it does control six of the eight around it. And the sulfur should control? Six. Six, and it does control? Four. Four, so its charge is? Positive two for the sulfur. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now does everybody see that? This is your time. I don't need to know this. You do. So now is the time to cry out if you don't see that. Yes. I don't, I don't really think I see it. Do one of those lines equal one electron? So remember, every one of these lines is representing two electrons. Uh -huh. Representing two electrons which are shared. Okay. So, are you with us when I say that for the oxygen, it should control six? Yes. Okay? So let's see how many it does control. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those electrons have got nothing to do with sulfur. Right. They're not involved in the chemical bond to sulfur. But these two <laughs> electrons in the bond are. Okay. And of the two, one of them is designated as belonging to the sulfur, and one is designated as belonging to the oxygen. Okay. So it does have a share, and it's occupying mutual space between the atoms, but we have to decide who owns what. Okay. And anything time with electrons are shared, we say one to him, one to him. So two, four, six, and one of the two, seven, that are supposed to control six, so it has more of its share than it normally is happy with. Okay. This makes it minus one. How about the atoms here? Let's give it another minute because people are still chatting about it. Okay. Let's take a look. So again, it's the periodic table position compared to the Lewis structure that we're drawing. So how many electrons should a hydrogen control? One. One. How many does it control? One. One because it's got a share, an equal share of electrons in that bond. So each of those hydrogens is electrically neutral. For the oxygen down here, how many should it control? Six. Six. How many does it control? Six. Six. Okay, we're catching on. So it's electrically neutral. For the sulfur, how many should it control? 
Six. How many does it control? Seven. Seven. So it's minus one for the sulfur. Phosphorus, how many should it control? Five. How many does it control? Four. So it's charges. Plus one. Plus one is one shot. to be clear between how many electrons the atom sees to complete its octet, which is crucial, and how many electrons belong to that atom, and how many it's sharing with others. Okay. See, next thing you want. Well, we...